has begun. So it's been about a week since we played any of this run, uh, but it was a lot of fun. We had some really scary times. Um, <laughs> there, there was some moments last time we played where I was absolutely 100% sure that we were going to die, and I can't believe we didn't. So in this RimWorld run, if you haven't seen any of this playthrough, what we are doing is we are doing 500% hardest difficulty, no pause, all that good stuff that you're used to here at the stream. But we're also doing it with uh, no kill boxes, no trap tunnels, no burn boxes, none of that. Let's go Kin. Ashen, welcome in. So it's been, uh, it's been interesting. It's been really interesting. And uh, it's actually been a lot of fun. Looks like we still have some mega slaws leaving the map. Uh, let me check around, see what's going on. I don't remember if we had disease. We had some muscle parasites running their course. Some gut worms. But I think we're done with other disease. Okay. So we've been playing it pretty slowly because of the nature of having to defend like we were. But we were at like six pawns for a very long time. And the last two times that we played, we got up to 15. We have several shooting specialists. We have masterwork and legendary guns. And our people are super accurate. Uh, it is actually, actually kind of crazy how great we are doing when we actually engage in combat. combat. Um, so what were we in the process of doing? We had just converted our base to a bigger base. So this is slightly, quite a bit bigger, actually. We were just like in this for, for most of this game for like six years or something. Uh, we've put down some more research benches. We are trying to scan as much steel as possible. We're finally mining some steel down here. Um, but yeah, we're just going, we're researching. We're trying to get uh, pawns that are good at, at combat, at shooting specifically. And we are also looking um, for another cook and just good pawns in general. So, uh, Juno, thank you for the subscription. Thank you, Juno. The Eeyore series, jumping in to sub. See you when you watch on YouTube. That's awesome, yeah. Thank you, Juno. I appreciate it. Hopefully you are enjoying the, the Igor run. That was a crazy run. Crazy run. Been silenced here. Manhunting guinea pigs. That was pretty crazy too, yeah. Um, <laughs> they sound like squeaky like balloons when you hit them or whatever. Uh, we were in the process of changing all the doors out for auto doors on the exits so we can get around uh, quickly. Remember that. So we'll continue to work on that also. And I had just placed all these down, so let's go ahead and do the home area there. And, uh, yeah, it's been going, uh, it's been going better than I thought. So we had a, uh, there's a highlight, I think actually we should highlight. Let's go on Crimson, welcome in. We had, a an attack that was like 15, this is when we had like 7 people. 15 centipedes and some other random odds and in mechs attack us all at once and I thought we were dead and we we did it without taking any damage from the mechs at all that was unreal and then before that one we had like four or five raids in a row on top of each other double breach raid from multiple sides where both breach raids actually broke all the way into the base and I was like all right well there goes attempt number one and we did it we managed to uh we managed to do it so I don't know it's been it's been really crazy but um, part of the reason what, that we've been able to survive those things is because of low shields. And I think, I think we're getting to the point where we're out of low shields. I'm going, I think we're basically, we got one low shield. We got one low shield. <laughs> Ooh. Speed highlight was insane. It's inspired you to play no pause. It's so fun. I don't know, man. If you can get over, if if you, if you can get over the uh, being upset of losing, like, and, and it's hard to do. And also, I I do usually put this out there that, for me, like it sucks. Obviously, anytime you lose progress and you lose time that you've put into a game, but for me, I I am fortunate that I get to play so much and it's my job to play. So I know I'm going to be playing more. I know I'm going to be playing dozens or hundreds of hours of more from world. So it bothers me a little bit less knowing that I can definitely understand if you are, you know, maybe you can play a few hours a week or whatever, 10 hours a week or something. And then you're a hundred hours into a playthrough and you, and you lose to centipedes because of no pause. That would feel pretty awful. It's going to take you forever to get back there. But uh, I, I definitely recommend if you've not tried no pause before and you like combat, if that's one of your favorite parts of the game, have a save file for no pause. Maybe just no pause during combat. 
Like literally just play your normal game and then try not to pause during combat and just uh, just to see how it is. It's a uh, it's an interesting experience. So throws games on purpose when I haven't thought of a challenge for the next run. No pawns don't st stack when they build repair. Don't get stuck when they build repair three wide walls. I just have it build in order. So there's a mod for it. I don't use the mod. So what I do is if I have something like this, I literally do this. And then when they finish that wall, then I do that. So I just, I just go in order. I just disallow the parts and then I micromanage it. So that's what I do. There is a mod where they'll build it in order though. I forget the name of the mod. I used to use it a long time ago. And it, it was a really nice mod because you could make like an entire block and they would do it in order. Um, the smart building. Uh, Octung has, Octung has um, something similar to that, but is it smart construction? But it doesn't work 100% of the time, unfortunately. Cross and got you to try no pause as well. You're unable to go back. It's so crazy. Man, I remember one of the first runs I did no pause on, we had someone die 100% that could have been prevented with pause. Absolutely. It was a triage situation and they died and I felt really bad, but almost like in a in a good way. It's like, it's like I'm kind of glad I didn't save them, even though they were an important pawn. That's part of like the story and like, it's kind of crazy. It's nice. Ring stuff. It rings a bell. Uh, all right, we got a slave trader. Uh, capable of violence. 70 years old. <laughs> uh, oh, we got a uh, another bear at the end of the last uh, play session as well. Another bear. I do remember that. Um, and we started having psychic tea on everyone. What clothes do they have on? They have on uh, capes. So we got... Uh, Button-down shirt, pants, cape. Cape is the exact same defensive stats as dusters. So I usually use dusters, but I decided to use capes this time for the for the fashion. And then whatever the best helmet is, I can I can find. So button-down shirt, pants, and then either duster or cape, whichever one. And then whatever the best helmet is, and that's better than recon armor by quite a bit. Well, over 100 days in, blood out faster than one pawn. Contend, sadly, feels bad. Samurai helmet. And yeah, the, the, the helmets are just ones that we bought along the way. Uh, so as soon as Mule's done with his breakdown, speaking of helmets, we're going to bring him in and we're going to have him go trade off some stuff. Try to get a helmet for uh, Jabril. How are we doing on our festivals? Uh, we're quite a ways out on the festivals. And... Oh, man. We're at 100,000 wealth off of raid cap, so... Raids are going to be pretty beefy right now. I bet we'd have like a hundred tribals. We get a tribal raid, but uh, yeah. All right, uh, we should probably start stockpiling more high explosives. At this stage in the game. So we're gonna go up to at least twenty. Uh, anima grass. All right, there we go. Flozus. level three what is wealth cap it depends a little bit because not all wealth is created equal i'll i talk about that quite a bit in the wealth guide at exclamation wealth but for my play style i usually hit wealth or uh raid cap in the like high 200s so for me i usually hit the cap around 270,000 wealth sometimes as early as 250 sometimes as late as 300 and it's just because not all wealth is created equally and a lot of raid points um calculation depends on the number of pawns and stuff that you have so what i mean by not all wealth is created equally is uh certain things are worth well like i said diff different wealth amounts depending on which form it's in and also different raid points mainly colonists but yeah with my play style usually around that high 200s so I usually base it off of the size of raids that are coming more than I do the the wealth as a as a sort of black and white, but yeah, it's pretty usually pretty accurate. Oh, we're on power. We are uh, we're 98 power over. Wow, that is really tight. We should, maybe we should do another Kim Fuel Gin. 
type of kind of capable of violence. I think they were also a little old, weren't they? Yeah, 53. But yeah, incapable of violence. Tough kind is nice, but... Burning craft... Burning passion crafting. Passion construction. Good pawn aside from... Old and uh, incapable of violence. Except everyone who tries to join. Yep. That was the run I did after Igor, actually. That was the good guy run. So that one will go up on YouTube. I, I kind of want to do another good guy run sometime. It was uh it was pretty hard. So in the good guy run, we had to accept everyone. We had to try to help everyone. We could do no evil as well. Welcome back. Your steadfast loyalty is great. Oh yeah, that's a good point too. On 500%, that's what it is, yeah. Uh, can't stop. Give her the three months. How long has this run been going? 447 in-game days. So we've been going pretty slow. Yeah, and it stops, it stops counting wealth at a million. So literally, if you play on a really low percentage, you will never reach raid point cap because it stops counting it at a million. So if you're playing on 10% and you get to a million wealth, whatever your raid points is at that time, you're not going to get more than that. Resisting war crimes, it was very hard. Yes, it was. It really, really was. Every time I got someone that I want, I would want to sacrifice normally, it was, you could see the pain on my face. Where's the real Adam? <laughs> so that'll go up on YouTube after Igor. I might do another one of those sometime. Mood's looking pretty good. Serious pain, yeah. Long outdoors, whatever. Whatever. Mules over the breakdown. Let's go ahead and bring them back in. How long has it been since we, or since these restocked? Oh, we uh, lost breakfast again, right? We lost breakfast, yeah. We need to get another uh, another horse. All right, Mule will have you grab one, hopefully. Let's go on, Brittany. Welcome in. Doing all right. The loyal Panthers. Let's get in here. Get in here. Oh, we absolutely need to get this high shield too. So let's switch uh, Dev over to unrestricted for a second. Get this. So deconstructing the the uh, high shield is going to give us uh, shield core, and we're going to be able to make a low shield. And low shields are absolutely required for this. Well, maybe not required, but it makes me feel a lot safer. The main thing we want them for... Oh, I forgot he would do ha hauling. Let's have Mule do it after he tries to. Was there another shield to the right? Right there, okay. Thank you. Uh, so the main thing that uh, we want them for is really bad breach raids. Really bad breach raids. So we can use the low shield to absorb uh, a mech breach, like all of it, and kill them before the shield falls. Same thing for our explosive pirate breach. So that's what we need to save them for. And then, uh, you know, an, an oh crap button. Okay, take care of two panthers. Uh, how about not? How about not? Yeah, there's one right there, yeah. Runs from getting destroyed by a single Doomsday rocket. That's right, they do. <laughs> Take that with you. Mule, are you on your way? Drinking Psychite, taming Muffalo. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. So, Johnny, welcome in. You can still welcome in. So, and Doug, 5G sucks down at home, buffering like crazy. It's unfortunate. Lurking. Game looks good. Thank you. Thank you for lurking. Is the clip of the Doomsday still around? I don't think there's a command for it, but the clip still exists. Yeah. That was brutal. That was a brutal, brutal hit. Worst Doomsday I've ever been hit with. Twitch hates mobile data. Go on, Cali. Welcome in. Oh, we got a tame. We got another one. I only need one. This will be breakfast the fifth. What is wealth independent mode? 
So I've played on, uh, I did a full playthrough of Wealth Independent Mode. It's the 20 year run up on YouTube. So if you see the, the one with the red border and, and Randy's image on it, that's the, the Wealth Independent. But what Wealth Independent is, is it scales to maximum raid points based on a combination of the time you set and the percentage. So Wealth Independent means that raids continue to get harder over that time frame, regardless of your wealth, regardless of anything. So if like you try to play low wealth and slow, it doesn't matter. You're gonna get pounded. It's uh, It gets really crazy. We actually tried to do 500% um, Wealth Independent Cassandra 10 years. And by the end of the second season, we were getting like 45 to 50 man explosive pirate raids. It was absolutely nuts. Um, someday I'm probably gonna go back and try Wealth Independent Cassandra again. But Wealth Independent 500% 10 year Cassandra, she she hits maximum raid points at the two year mark. It was brutal. So we ended up not being able to do it. It was just unreal. Way harder than Randy. Clock is ticking, yep. So it takes a combination. You can put it from anywhere from one year to 20 years. And then it, it takes the percent scaling as well. So if you put like wealth independent 10 years, 500%, it hits raid cap at like the two year mark. It's rough. Mule's wearing his butt off to show that he should stay alive. Yeah, and you know what? He's alive. He's alive. He's doing a, doing a fine job of that. Does he get a name? No. You know, uh, this colony would actually be dead without Mule. Maybe we should name... As soon as we name Mule, he's dead. Oh, I forgot Smurf died last stream. All right, we're up to breakfast the fifth. Breakfast the fifth. You, my friend, are rated E for excellent... Who's this excellent person? Aspen Arrow! Tier 2! 15 months, Aspen? It's been 15 months? How much longer until you get on your uh, on your return team, by the way? Thank you, Aspen. Very much appreciated. Glad you are still around. That doesn't seem like real time, though. How is that possible? Time keeps on into the future. Let's go. Those muffalo and get out. Extremely impressive. We also get that question a lot. Like it might be one of the most I get. As people come in and they're like, how are your people so happy living in that crappy room? It's like, listen, it might not look like it, but this is an extremely impressive barracks. This thing is giving them a massive mood bo boost twice a day. How's that possible? It's it's dirt floors. There's skulls laying everywhere. Clever use of game mechanics. Get out of here, mule. Get out of here, mule. One week. Last day of the team. It's next Friday. Hooray! Hooray! All right, mule is out. Are the pillars there to hold down the roof? Uh, it, well, initially they weren't. So our people need, um, they need the surroundings of their ideology because of the memes and precepts that we've chosen. So if they don't have um, the, the elitist surroundings is what it's called for ours, they'll end up having um, a, a low mood, like a big mood hit. So one of the easiest ways to do that is just put up columns. Columns actually count as your ideology, uh, see the styles. And so having that will actually satisfy that need. And um, yeah, so these are actually holding up the middle roof right here, since we're, since it's really wide. But yeah, these are mainly there for the, um, the surrounding style. But they can't hold up roof too, yeah. Feels like it's hurting, you get it? <laughs> So it doesn't fly away, so it doesn't fall down. So it doesn't fly away. All right, so we are looking for, uh, ooh, there we go, cataphract helmet. Done. Done. Oh, 
Oh, do they have a... Uh, let's check for low shields. Have a shield belt, so no. All right, Mule, come right back with a cataphract. You never know. <laughs> Okay, your first thing from Randy today is a Manhunter pack. It gives the idea of kind of what raid points we're at. We're at 35 Grizzly Bears. 35 Grizzly Bears, okay. So that's about what I would, uh, yep. Remember when I was saying that I think we're about halfway to raid cap, somewhere around there? No, no, about 100,000 away from raid cap is what I said. That feels about right. Could take him. We probably could, but they're defense. They're an extra layer of defense, so. Okay. It's going Schnee. Welcome in. Strong. Jeff, welcome in. Why is Kin so slow? Does he have gut worms or something? Doesn't matter. It was just dug too deep, so. We're such good shots, man. It's crazy. All that training with the smoke launcher really paying off. Another layer of defense. This one's on the inside, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna do something I usually don't do. Um, one of the reasons why is people are idle so i'm just gonna work on making everywhere they go a little bit more um not impressive so to say but at least not ugly so there we go oh this was igor for a bit it was like don't let him hit you double damage you <laughs> so what was going on with kin oh <laughs> right Ken's uh, missing some body parts. Ah, he's fine. Body parts, who needs them? Or Serenity, always like to have a couple of those. Unsightly environment. Trying to free our own bear? <laughs> we got two of them now. We got two of them. It's gonna be real nice with that bear army going, yeah? Oh, we had a baby bear. Yes. It's starting. Modded. I don't use very many mods. You can do exclamation mods if you want to see, but usually it's just no pause. So we have a mod that literally makes it so the game never pauses. Menus, trade screens. Nothing. I literally can't pause the game. So you can do exclamation mods if you uh, if you want to see what we're using, but that's, that's amazing. What is going on? <laughs> Randy is sending the entire animal kingdom after us. The entire animal kingdom, by the way, is just bugs, bears, and donkeys. Bugs, bears, and donkeys. I think Mule, uh, good thing I remember to pause Mule out there because he would get wrecked. Let's go on Soul Sour, welcome in. The pause that does excellent events. Uh, no, they posted on Discord and asked me what, how I wanted to receive it, and I replied, but uh, they haven't replied to that reply yet. 75 Yorkies, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. You were, so you remember that too, huh? I couldn't believe that. If someone, if, if someone really believes that, I think this person did, it's always hard to tell. If someone really believes that, they should try it. We had someone that, that was telling me that it's like, I shouldn't put the no pause thing in the title or talk about it or anything because playing on 1x is basically the same as pausing. It's like, it is nothing like, try it. Tr try to play on no pause versus 1x on something. It is night and day. And I enjoy the no pause, so, but it's, it's really, it shows that they've never tried it. Mod wife. 
advocate for color coded mood bars makes it easy i used to use that all the time yeah as a viewer it makes it easier too yeah turn off the disease effects so you're not cheating only double speed you tried no pause just by unbinding the pause it's a huge difficulty increase this mod needs the toggle turn on off to remove the challenge mode it's absolutely perfect yeah yeah that would be excellent it'll help so much the other thing i'm going to ask them is for some reason the no pause 4x you can't hit four to go to but the developer mode 4x you can that'd be another nice little change same as pausing we all know you do that <laughs> you screw one goat you screw one goat let's go on lunar <laughs> whoa what is this about Jabril called Griffin a liar bird. This drove Griffin into a rage. What do you mean? Liar birds are amazing. Have you guys heard a liar bird? They can imitate like anything. They can make like chainsaw sounds that sound identical. That's no insults. I know liar bird, you fool. I don't know. It's a good thing. I'm a griffin. <laughs> Whatever, guys. Just chill. Just chill out. I ain't no ox moron. What movie was that? Yeah, I don't know. No, no, an oxymoron. Up, casually walk together back. See, Bioware's Netflix announcement? No, I have not seen any of today's stuff, no. What was it? I don't mind you telling me. My wife and I watched the trailers from yesterday, uh, right after the stream, but. Why did you say you're engaged now, Soul Sapper? That sounds familiar. Yes, you are married to Flozus. Yep. You guys are sharing a bed. Range Adventure and Dragon Age Absolution coming soon to Netflix. Wow, really? That's interesting. Transhumanist Run? Catch live. It's awesome. Thank you for watching that. I appreciate it. It's an animated series. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Netflix, huh? Ah, hmm. oh, Renaissance Man. Yeah, I haven't seen that in forever. Oh, man. I forgot that was a movie. That was pretty good. We need to start growing more food. Arc anime series. Finish with the last year video. Is there more to come? Yep. Whenever I can do it. Between doctor visits and tests and all that other bullcrap. Uh, but yes, there there's there's plenty more episodes. I just and I'm 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 doing them as fast as I I can with everything going on at the moment. I know I'm like really far behind on them, but it's been it's been a pretty uh, crazy year. But yeah, I'm glad you are um, you're looking forward to the next episodes and more on the way. It's just whenever I can get them done. How far behind is YouTube? Uh, the Igor run finished in December, so about five months. About five months YouTube is behind. YouTube used to be only like a couple weeks behind to a month behind, and then it's gotten really crazy this year with everything going on. Yeah, that's true. Soul Sapper, yeah. I put the, like, unedited, untimestamped, unthumbnailed, undescriptioned ones up on Patreon by popular demand at the cheapest I could put them up on there. People kept asking me to. I was like, all right. The cheapest I could put put a subscription on there is a, is a dollar, so. All right. The bears are uh, asleep now, so they've stopped being they They'll path off the map, but I want to take advantage of this and uh, I want to get some um, some shooting experience. So we're going to take everyone aside from Kin and Soul Sapper 
and we're just gonna go hit him up. Yeah, I tried to put that in the, um, yeah, no worries. And like I said, I appreciate, I'm glad that people are uh, are wanting more episodes and I'm, I'm doing them as fast as I can, uh, I can at the moment with everything going on. Um, but I try to always put in the pinned comment if you can do stuff like get, get it on Patreon early or whatever. Over the week, it's got a lot to catch up on. Learned a lot. It's the schedule and the flowers for floor of saved your runs. Oh man, it's so good. Yep, biphasic is the uh, best thing that ever, ever figured out on my own in the world. Came up with it on my own. Oh my God, <laughs> these shooting specialist sniper, uh, trigger happy snipers. <laughs> it's unreal. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, they started missing that far away. I guess that makes sense, but I was like, man, they don't miss. Crazy. Crazy. I think we probably could have taken them, yeah. Literally just stood out in a field as they came. Uh, probably not with that many, because it's just the cooldown. They would have overwhelmed us a little bit, but I mean, I could have kited them. No, they, they have Scaria, so it's not worth it. It would take too much medicine and effort to heal Scaria off of them when we have our own breeding pair anyway. So. Rice is one of the worst in the yellow soil, the stony soil. That's the one that you want to grow potatoes in if you're going to use it. So we'll just do that. There we go. So, hi, do you still plan on also uploading failed runs? So the, people ask me about failed runs a lot. And, and so I mean this not in like a braggy sort of way. But usually, if I make it to mid or late game, I usually win. My win rate when you get I get to like mid game is is probably like higher than ninety percent, probably like higher than ninety five percent. That's because I have the kill box and defensive kind of thing mapped out pretty well. Sometimes we still lose, but usually if we get to mid to late game, I win. However, I do lose pretty often in the early game with like naked tribal brutality and Randy and whatnot of getting unlucky. But usually the losses are not that interesting. So the reason I usually don't share the losses is because it's typically something like, all right, it's day two, we've gotten two diseases and I had a manhunter pack. It's day one and Randy decided to send um, a raid already and we got food poisoning and flu on day one. So we usually lose when we lose. It's generally like in the first season. So those never seem like that interesting to me. So one reason I decided to include the ones with Igor is Igor was different because it was a learning curve. It was actually kind of interesting to, to figure out how he was functioning and, and how to overcome it, right? So having said that, if I have any runs that are interesting losses that aren't like day one disease type stuff, I will definitely include those. So this run, this run is far in. If we lose this run, I will still upload this one. And in fact, there's one of my long runs that is on YouTube right now. There's a long run, I won't spoil which one it is, that does not end in a victory. Uh, we end up losing during the ship launch, which is like, at that point, that was the first ship launch I had lost in like three years or something. But I won't tell you which one it is, but uh, there is one up there and it's pretty sad. Pretty sad. One big mistake, one big mistake. But anyway, that's a long answer to your question, but there you go. L didn't use the Royal Wii. <laughs> no comment. Uh, yeah, I think Scaria is like three, right? Something like that. Done with that game, ran, and ran it down. No, I mean, 
Welcome back. It's really crazy because I thought I had time to move. I didn't need to move, but I thought I had time, and then that wall broke, and that was it. That was it. Grass wing! Thank you for the 18 months, Grass. Very much appreciated. First time I catch you live? Wild J, thank you for coming in. Also much appreciated. Thank you, Wild J. Thank you, Grass wing. 18 months, man. Long time. Glad you think so, Grass wing. And yesterday is still kind of a blur to think about that. Uh, it's going to Strudel. So there's some streamers that I've watched for like years and years, but I'm usually a lurker there, right? And so there's a streamer that I watch for, um, uh, well, I started watching them for Mario, Super Mario Hacks, uh, ROM Hacks, and for Mario Maker. And I've lurked in their channel for like years. It's one of the people that I, that I hang out there, you know, when I'm working and stuff like that. But I never, I don't think I've ever typed in their chat. And then uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, YouTube, for whatever reason, lets you know when you're when someone subscribes, it also has a lot of subscribers. I don't know why YouTube does that. It's an automated thing on the back end. It literally shows you in your dashboard. Here are the last five people with the highest subscribers that have subscribed to you. And I saw they had subscribed to me and I was like, interesting. And then I go look and he's doing a Darkest Dungeon challenge. I'm like, ah, that's how he found my, my channel. So, uh, and yesterday he raided the channel with like, 4,000 people. It was absolutely nuts. Uh, it's Barbarous King for anyone that's wondering. He's actually doing a 24 hour stream t uh, today. But uh, yesterday was like a blur because of that. I was trying out that Kaplerth game, which I actually enjoyed. All right. I wasn't playing it very well, but it was pretty fun. Man, oh man. <laughs> Those things are crazy. Crazy when it happens. Screamer wasn't here. You didn't see that. Some people after stream was like, man, I thought you were getting bot rated. I was like, no, no, no. But anyway, the reason I bring that up is because um, with what you said, um, uh, with the reset message, grass wing, surprisingly, that's basically what he said before he rated me. I went, I went to see, which might be a little bit weird, but I like, I went over to his VOD afterwards. Johnny Tight Lips is getting married to Wild Fetus. I went over there afterwards and I was like, did he say anything before he raided me? Because I'm really curious why he raided me. And that was like one of the things he said too. Which is very nice. This trailer? Yeah, I'll check that out. Yeah. So we're going to need uh, another double bed. Malaria. Oh God. This run has had more disease than our last jungle run. It's been really annoying. All right. Um, not me. It's not weird. It makes perfect sense. But, uh, all right. Who got this? Only Cage, Jabril, Ken, and Fetus. Okay, so, uh, Jabril, you're already there. Uh, Cage. There. Kin and Fetus. Kin. And fetus is down here. Okay. had more disease in the early game in the high life run absolutely not no that's god awful you can, yeah that run is so unreal uh, if you have not watched a whole run there are certain ones that i some are more stated runs there are certain ones that i suggest watching on youtube and that first fluid ideology run the one with the fluid ideology um key art as the uh, i think expedition fluid actually in the chat will take you to that playlist it took almost four years to research beds. <laughs> it was god awful. That was the worst Randy, the absolutely cursed seed. 
curse seed. And what's funny is that's one of the best seeds I've ever had. Up to that point, that was one of the best seeds I had ever had. And everyone else that was trying the seed also was getting destroyed on it as well. Like Smurf was doing a run on it where we were working on the um, the auto bong defense with the water crossing and all that. And other people were doing it. And so many people quit that map because for whatever reason, it felt like that seed was cursed. And we kept going though. And it took us almost four years to research complex furniture. Now to give you an idea, give you an idea. Um, here's complex furniture. <laughs> it took almost four years to get complex furniture, which is 450, well on, uh, yeah, yeah, 450. It was, uh, it was a trip. All right, so we can bring Mule back in. Incredible little high wealth running the end. Yeah, yeah. Never give up, never surrender. So. Ah, uh, Harry, thank you for the six months. Thank you, Harry. Good morning, thank you, Harry. For having a good day as well. Saturday morning. Saturday morning somewhere. I think that's how the saying goes. God, that freaking run. It was so awful. It's got some of the most interesting parts of an early game too, though. Like the prostitute I had to execute. <laughs> oh my God. That's one of my most memorable moments in uh, RimWorld also is reading that background and then being like, holy Christ, I wish never read the backgrounds, never read the backgrounds. And then she started to, she started to convert us when we were trying to convert her. And we had to save our ideology because it was we were literally the only person with our ideology in the world at that point. And so I had to kill her and we take her out to execute her. And I go outside the door. We're like across a courtyard. I think I only have like a, like a revolver that we got from a raider or something. And just one shot insta headshot killed her. So yeah, it was so ridiculous. What a run. Stuck in the pan. Definitely one of the runs I'll never forget, 100%. Or uh, Meals in Black. Remember Meals in Black? That was, wasn't was Meals in Black also like the first episode? Yeah. Zan is summoned Granny. Granny, do you have any life advice from us or for us? If there's anything we should remember, Granny, what should it be? Die, Squirrel. Oh, uh, th thanks, Randy. Don't ask me. I uh, think you were saying Granny. Hey, sometimes you get a good Granny, sometimes you don't. Just like real life. Weaponized auto bongs. They were so good that they got nerfed. It was so good. That's another one of those things I was really proud of that I came up with myself, and it, other people probably independently discovered it too, you know. But uh, it was. Uh, it's another one of those proud moments. Like I was like, I can't believe this is working and look how good it is. <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and use uh, preach health on kin. <laughs> Cage takes his bed afterwards. Squirrels are OP. <laughs> That's right. The new guide says so. Almost there. Followed by a triple granny. All right, granny. What? What? What did you mean? What did you mean by this? This thing. Well, Adam, this is how you should live your life. You should never say it's the run. Unless it's the run, then it's okay. I'm more hat than man. Would you like one finger or two?
Granny, please. How's it going, Max? I don't know what Granny meant by that. I can't think of anything. Talking about tentacles or something? Maybe. Granny, please. The Brown Harvesting, anybody got an idea what to do with the rest of rest to not get a moody buff? Um was the wait, so do you have the the precept where they don't care about organ harvesting in your colony, or do you not? Let's go, Wicked Warrior, welcome back. Down there for now. Is there a world of fantastic game? Uh, I would say so. I don't think I would have streamed it for over 3,000 hours if I didn't think so, though. I do it because I hate it. Tell you something fascinating? Something fascinating. Like a real fascinating thing or like a RimWorld thing? Real fascinating thing? Perception of time is different at your eyes than it is at your toes. There you go. Care for the harvest, but he definitely is going to die. Give you a debuff for that. Um, was he a previous colonist or? Yeah, I mean, it just depends. Yeah. If they're a previous colonist or they have any friends or anything like that, you're going to get the debuff no matter what you do with him. Unless you keep him alive. <laughs> Now something for RimWorld, a good tip with RimWorlds. Hmm. Let me see if I have one going on right now. Right now. Um, here you go. You can use this instead of making a pin for your animals. This is no wealth and it's easy to move it around so that they can graze better wherever. This is in the base game. It is just a hitching post that's under miscellaneous. You can hitch a bunch of animals to here without a pin. Uh, your people will do it automatically, no mod required. The animals will graze around here. And when there's no more grazing food, you can literally just make a new one over where there's other grazing food, like there. And then they'll eat that, and then you move it again. And you don't have to worry about a pin. You don't have to worry about feeding your animals as long as you're on a grazable mount, uh, map, uh, depending on how many animals you end up getting. But uh, yeah, the caravan hitching spot can be used basically as a pin on its own. And another good thing about it is you don't have to worry about the animals, like, running out if any of the fence gets destroyed. Uh, if you have them in a pin and a single piece of the fence gets destroyed, your animals are going to start running out of there. But this can't be destroyed. Five meals give a mood buff? Yes. Lavish even more. Getting a few boomalopes. Yeah, boomalopes are actually crazy. One boomalope can power two generators by itself. Flashing red symbol, uh, it's broken. It's broken because it's an auto door. So when auto doors break, they just become normal doors. Doors in between the two stone doors. Uh, that's just a leftover. Come, steal yourself. Gunzidian. We are building an army. Your ideology, if that counts. How do you keep him alive without a liver? Oh, I thought you said kidney originally for some reason. Uh, yeah, you won't be able to do that mods. <laughs> Let's go on Ogre. We're constantly living in the past. That's right. That's right. Perception of time. Started happening on your game. You thought it was a mod. Uh, Wicked Warrior. There it is. I had to scroll for a second. Wicked Warrior, thank you for the gift subs. 10 gift subs. Thank you, Wicked Warrior. Who'd you hit? Willis, Nep, Rinfield, Scaleblade, Toasty, Professor... Professor Fox. There we go. Wega, Pete, Traffic Man, and Front. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Uh, Wicked Warrior, thank you. Very much appreciated. Man. 
How many are you at now total already? I sold 25 already. Thank you, Wicked Warrior. Was looking strong. Yeah, it's been going really well. It's going really, really well. Uh, yeah, so this is just a leftover. These wooden doors. I'm going to actually replace those two. It was just a temporary thing. So auto doors, when they break down, they need repaired. They need uh, like a component replaced. Kind of like when your geothermal breaks down, but they become normal doors during that. So if you're still using them as doors when they're broken down. They're just not, uh, they won't, they're not any faster than if it was a plasteel door. So. All right. Uh, so speaking of, I think I'm going to, how much plastic do we have? 311. And how are we doing on this disease here? 3861, 3443, 3753, 250. We really need to get another cook. Let's go traffic man, Renfield, welcome in. Jib. Usually use, rinse most, one hit kills. Oh yeah, I forgot about that mod, yeah. Damn. That one's a that one's a good one too. I haven't used that in a long time. So there can be a problem with dropping these meals on the floor. If you don't have idle people or haulers or whatever that takes the things away immediately, sometimes they're gonna overmake meals, but I'm all right with it. It makes it a lot faster to cook. The reason I'm doing 1X instead of 4X, it takes the same um, amount of time on average, but the good news is if they get food poisoning in a meal, it won't impact four at a time, it's only one. And the other thing is um, if they end up having to leave, like we get raided, they have a breakdown or something. Um, canceling one meal because of that loses a lot more, or it loses a lot less work time than if they cancel in the middle of four. I have some people ask that sometimes too. It's like, why, why don't you have them doing four meals at a time? And I do do that sometimes, especially later in the game, but. Are they super immune? Cage is just destroying that. And they will be able to keep count and not overdo stuff with a drop on floor. Yeah, that's true too. I didn't do that because I was going to put a uh, chair there initially, but yeah, that's another good, good point. Call aside to get bashed in the head by a raider. Thought it was time for some smoke leaf after. <laughs> Low food. We still need another cook. I mean, right now, our two main cooks are sick, so that's why we're falling behind on it, but I was talking last time that I'd really like you to get another primary cook at this point. And the reason I'm just taming everything with Mule is literally just to go trade off. So I'm lonely, welcome in. Oh, I didn't update the ideology. This is what we're up, up to now. We got Spermacist, Proselytizer, and Human Primacy, and we were ready to get a fourth one, but I'm trying to wait until we get um, like another problem causer off map to determine which one I'm gonna use. I'm really thinking about going to learn this one. Getting addicted, Pawns got addicted to Psykite last night, cut off his legs and gave him shiny bionic legs when he was better. <laughs> so now they have an incentive to, to become addicted to drugs. So I want bionic legs. Maybe I should get a drug addiction. Couple seasons of suffering for bionic legs? Done. So, so far today, uh, only animal attacks. Only animal attacks. So when malaria is done on all these, oh, I didn't assign this new uh, new bed. Who was it? It was uh, Johnny Fetus. Didn't read the art either. An engraving on this furniture portrays Geritus, 
sitting under a cherry tree, surrounded by a red aura. She is surrounded by five meerkats. The scene takes place on the outskirts of a town. The work is shaded in hues of white and gray. This artwork tells the story of Garretus meditating. All right. Not as cool as my bed. Method toss on the dirt floor. That's right. Dirt, don't get dirty. Dirt, don't, don't get dirty. <laughs> that's my, that's my cleanliness method. As long as your dirt's clean, you're good. Why, why clean a perfect, why clean anything when you can just have a clean floor? That was unusually coherent, yeah, for Rimworld, yeah. Inspired taming. Okay. Not on our, our person that's taming anyway, but. Latest tutorial video, had an idea. Have you thought about just making these small YouTube shorts? Yes. I see a lot of views. Uh, I've already made some of them and they're, they're kind of whatever. I don't think it really brings many people to the channel. But I'm also going to do some short guides collector of stuff. And uh, I was actually just talking about it recently on Discord. I plan on making some um, more like tip videos that are just like 30 seconds long. That is just like it states the fact. And then it says, if you want to know how it works, go to the real guide. So, um, yeah. I mean, I think my guide videos are already short. Like a lot of them are like five to seven minutes, but way shorter. So for instance, the passing one, I plan on doing one that's, and one thing I would like to do is I, I can go to Google trends and whatnot and keyword research, and I can see the most asked questions for RimWorld um, on, on Google or on YouTube. And I, I've thought about going through those and literally just making a short of each one. The only reason I haven't started doing that already is just time constraints, but yes, it's a good idea. And uh, I was literally just talking about it. Was that yesterday? I was talking to Smurf about it, maybe yesterday. So like, for instance, doing one that's like, why do raiders attack my walls? And then literally just answer the question in 30 seconds while showing a clip and then say, if you want more details about this and why they do this and why it works this way, check out my pathing guide and then link to it. So have all that stuff like interconnected. Yes, good idea. And yes, I, I have thought of it. Just welcome in. War sheep. Win war sheep. But I think that I think that would be good. I've even thought about it's it's it would be counterproductive now to do it. But I even thought about having a separate YouTube channel just as a guides channel. But YouTube, even if you own the each channel and even if they're on the same account, which mine are, I have multiple YouTube channels under the same account. They don't let you transfer videos over to it. So I would literally have to re-upload every single guide video, reset all comments all views everything to move them over to another channel and restart the algorithm on them <laughs> i don't think it's probably worth i think i i try to do a good job of segmenting the current channel between guides and other stuff with thumbnails and playlists and on the website but you need a kiting guide oh really you care about it that's interesting yeah i've never thought about doing one of those Kiting just kind of comes second nature because I've played so many like games like that you need to do that. So RTS games, MMOs, ARPGs, like kiting and stutter stepping has just always been like second nature because of all that. But yeah, I haven't thought about that one. I'll put that on the list. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Especially the RimWorld. So with RimWorld, the answer to almost every question, aside from just saying it depends, there is a super short answer that just literally tells you, this is it. And then there's a slightly longer one that tells you, this is it in these different situations. And then you can go really long and say, this is why it works that way. Here's all the math behind it. Here's the code. Here's what the code is doing. Here's how it functions. Like you can make a RimWorld guide anywhere from 30 seconds to like hours long. I try to usually make mine in the single minute mark, like not one minute, but single digit minute marks. 
and usually just make them however long they need to be to explain what I'm trying to explain. Counting be easier than possibly depositing. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know his thing and misdoing it. Yeah, I'm, I mean, you probably do not do it in arc. Have you never done it in arc? Like you hit a dinosaur with something that slows it. And then you, while you're reloading, you run far enough away. And as soon as you're reloading, you turn, you shoot it. And then you do that again. You just keep doing that. Keep slowing it and shooting. You probably do the other method where you just, ca you lure them into a cage and just shoot them through the cracks. <laughs> you have to do that with some of them. I know, but I'm sure you do that sometimes in arc, right? Where you kite stuff. Just trying to relate it to a game that I know you play. I would say it, it's a, with Rimworld, it's a little bit of a feel thing too. You get better at it the more you do, just like with everything. But what I mean by a feel to it is what you're trying to do is you're trying to move the amount of time it takes for their cooldown on their shot to come back. So, and different weapons have different cooldowns on it. So like, you know, you want to shoot and then you want to run while the cooldown's coming back. And it depends on the weapon a lot, but. In both arc feels a little different to control character versus more pawns. Gotcha. All right, is everyone good now? Yeah, it's probably harder to teach mechanics-based things like that, but it's probably it's probably a possible thing that we can show. All right, we're gonna get Mule back off the map. Uh, I think I'm going to want some more um, boomalopes, actually. Because we can't get more geothermals in this game because of how uh, the no-kill box thing works. Because they're going to attack our geothermals out there. So we're basically at two geothermals, and that's just what we're going to be at. So chem fuel generation is uh, extremely good, extremely efficient. And using boomalopes to power that even more so. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to... Keep a lookout for Boomalope on here. Boomalope is a 10% one, right? So I should be able to just look through this really quickly and look at for 10%. I think they're a 10% one still. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's no way. Uh, if you have a mount, yeah. How do Boomalopes run generators? You milk Boomalope for chem fuel, and the chem fuel generator uses chem fuel. For 10%, thank you. So a single Boomalope, as long as it, it uh, you can keep it fed, and it's milked on cooldown, can run two geothermals with leftover chem fuel. They're actually really, really good. Close to the base. Let's do that before we understand. Build a proper kill box. The thing is, with how far away they are and how the raids are going to work with there being no opening to the base at all, the next closest ones are like pretty far out. So like if I build a wall all the way down here and a raid spawns and goes towards it, we're gonna have to come way away from the base to kite and kill. I don't know. Start the breeding? Uh, no. I. They're, they're, it is a male or a female. I thought we had two, uh, two females. Hmm. That's interesting. Interesting. Might actually be, uh, a reason for me to make a pin instead. Yeah, I can't route any raids, yeah. They'll literally just attack it, so... Best animal to tame? Uh, like with most things, it depends. If you're talking about haulers, uh, what what's the best hauling animal? So again, it depends a little bit, but if you're looking for the best hauling animal just, um, if that's their main goal, there's some surprising answers to that. One of the best things in the game is a cougar. 
The only down thing, downside to the cougar is that it's uh, is higher wildness, so it takes longer to tame and keep it tame. But cougars are, uh, they can haul a lot. They are fast. They are predators, so they are not hunted. They can feed themselves and they're actually good in combat. So cougars are actually really good, just all around advanced trainable animals for your colony that don't cause a lot of filth. Uh, they're actually surprisingly good. Panthers are a reskin of uh, cougars. They take a little bit more food to keep fed. It's, it's minuscule though, so they're fine too. Um, huskies and labs, they're kind of the same kind of thing. Huskies and labs are pretty decent, but they do get hunted themselves. Labs um, are a little bit better than huskies because they take slightly less food, but huskies are better in colder weather. So cold map, huskies, not cold map, labs. If you're trying to min-max that little bit, it, it's honestly such a minuscule amount. It doesn't really matter. And bears and polar bears are kind of that same way too. Bears and polar bears, again, you know, have wildness. They're more, uh, they're dirtier animals, but they're really good in combat and they can haul a whole lot. Um, and grizzly bears eat a little bit less than polar bears. Polar bears are better in colder weather. But there's a lot of really good animals in the game. But one of the most surprising animals for hauling to me is the cougar. Cougar, cougars are actually extremely good uh, as long as you can keep them tame. Now, if you're talking about like production animals, if you're talking about food and leather, cows are ungodly good. Cows were already super good before 1.3 and 1.3 made them even better. Cows are, if you go look at the numbers, there's like, um, there's Excel sheets out there with the numbers. It's actually crazy how efficient cows are in this game. Super, super good. Uh, obviously, Boomalope for the Kim Fuel we already talked about. Now, if you're talking about combat, the game has done a pretty good job of having animals' combat rating be about equal across the board per wealth of the animal. Now, if you're talking about just one unit per one unit, Thrumbo wins out, obviously, no matter what. And elephants are really super good. Uh, Thrumbos are basically the god animals of the game. They're just really good at everything. They're not that filthy for their size, as long as you can keep them fed, they're really good. Elephants are extremely good, like thrumbos. They're also advanced training, and they're also mountable caravan animals. They make your caravan faster. The downside of elephants is they're super dirty. They have a 24 filth rating. One elephant causes more filth than 24 huskies, or the same as 24 huskies. So that's a really long answer to your question. But like I said, that's how it is with RimWorld. Like, with RimWorld, the answer is usually it depends. Cougars, um... You find cougars, like in this map, quite a bit too. Um, but yeah, you can find them in the jungle. Panthers are definitely jungle ones. What's up? Uh, when they're attached to the spot, they don't... That's what I've noticed, yeah. I've never had them breed while they're attached to the spot. So. So, you know, it's just fact. Polar bear army for the win. <laughs> Horses are great for caravan, yeah. Donkeys are like a lesser horse now. Oral forest, you see more cougars. Who knows how to read lips? <laughs> Will this be on the test? Yes. And see, that's what I mean about like guides can be any length. Like literally, if we were making a guide over the best hauling animal, you could literally just say in 30 seconds, you know, get dogs, cougars, panthers, bears. If you don't mind filth, get thrombos or elephants, right? And then you can go into more detail about which one's better in which situation. And then you go into more detail about which ones also can do other things well. And then you go into more information about like wealth and keeping wealth in mind as you're trying to decide which animal to get. And then you can go into the math of how all that works. Like, you know, like it's really crazy. And you don't need to know all that, right? You don't really need to know all that. So that's why I've been thinking about, and I posted on Discord about doing the, um, 
multiple guides on the same topic, ones that are just very like short clip, like here's the answer for you. And then leading into the more, and then the longer ones where it's like, and this is why. So we are out looking for low shields. And that's basically all we're looking for right now. Obviously getting, um, getting some more really good helmets we'll need in the future. But right now I just, I'm really looking for uh, low shields mainly. So we're going to uh, send Mule around. Approach to creating a guide. <laughs> he has a guide on making guides. Like tier lists too, yeah. Yeah, we, Torf and I was talking about a trait tier list and also a side casting tier list. Some confusing traits like Kim Fascination works. Expect it soon, so like within three years. <laughs> Pathing 101, 201. 303 requires course credit, 201. Met cluster. That's right. Hey, that's smaller than the last one. All right, this is kind of funny because <laughs> we have a um, we have one of these on the map on the world map that's increasing temperature by ten. Now we have one on our map decreasing it by ten. Oh yeah, that's true, Jerm. I forgot I did that once. Chunk skip S tier. There's no proximity activator and there's no timer. I mean, on the actual mech wake up. So we might as well leave this. Juicy power cells, a nice little defensive area. Don't ask you why you remember these things. So. Yeah, let's start breeding these. Yeah, I've actually never had them breed while they're on a hitching spot. So I don't, I don't know the mechanics behind that one, though. Never really looked into it, but it is a interesting type of thing. Okay. All right, so we can finally start looking for some more uh, characters. We haven't had a sacrifice in a long time either, so it's probably very important that we start doing this. We've been sitting here getting over diseases all day, but... For chickens, man, I used to use chickens so much. If you go back before 1.3, especially like my runs during like 1.1 or so, 1.2, I would almost always have hundreds of chickens because they were zonable and I used them as a meat shield. Um, and then after they did their work, after they were uh, the chicken meat shield for us, we just ate the ones that died. So it was like, it was, it was super awesome chickens defend the colony and then when they die you get to eat chicken nuggets it was amazing try to rabbit meat shield instead no but we have kind of theory crafted that tortoises would actually be one of the best to use that on again there's some surprising things so when we were talking about how cows are actually the most efficient resource wise that's including their milk and whatnot but if you actually go from just a leather and leather the value of leather standpoint and you look at those Excel sheets, tortoises are actually at the top. Tortoises are super efficient for their size, how much food they eat, they can graze, and for how much leather they produce when they die. So. Can pin them into a kill box? Yeah, it doesn't quite work the same though. Especially after the patch that made it so they try, enemies will try to ignore farm animals unless they're literally within melee range of them. We even had a kill box where I put a small pin of goats like 
a pin like this size just cram with goats and it it kind of worked but not like it used to yeah yeah rabbits should work instead of uh instead of chickens and tortoises are surprisingly good for for stuff like that I was really shocked when I saw tortoises on the list, especially near the top. I would have never thought, I would have never really figured that out myself either. I wouldn't have even looked into it. It's like not a thing. Sign, following colonists. Away from gunfire now. Yeah, that's a good point too. But tortoises are so slow. You can't flee fast enough, yeah. Yep, so that combination and the fact that when they die, they're actually pretty valuable is, is really awesome. Surprisingly good. Now increase your game 10 levels. Thanks, dude. Thank you for watching that. Creativity on Solst I wish we could get a normal raid. Is that animal attacks? This really feels like a weird rainy run, doesn't it? Like, we've had some really hard times and hard raids and overlapping raids, but it's mostly been animal attacks, mech clusters, and disease. Like, those three have been way more common than anything else. We've also had really bad luck with these festivals. Welcome back. Your steadfast loyalty is War greatly sheep. appreciated. Seven months. Thank you, Warsheep. It's a long time. I'm getting up there. Don't bait Randy into mech drop raids. Oh my god, Dev. Dev, Kin, come on. What was this about? Dev implied negative things about Kin's judgment. Alright. Fringer. Fifty one year old in cable of violence. Finally, bring that gold up. Nice. I have another strategy for ship launch. If we get to ship launch on this that I've never used before. That I'm really excited to show. I thought I thought about it maybe a week or two ago. I think it's gonna work. But uh I don't know, because I've never used it before. <laughs> Someone that's not good at construction to make that like flows this. I don't want a legendary shelf out there for no reason. Add to our raid points. Alright. 
Oh no, they died. Oh god. Why? Why is it always the young 50-something-year-olds that die? I don't even know if they were the... No, they weren't one of the 50 ones, were they? <laughs> no. resources. Someone else already on it? Yeah, they are. Jabril. Taking them to the dump pile. Yep. Alright. Any low shield stuff? No. We got some uh, Yorkies, though. Which are basically low shields. Not quite. Okay. Butcher time. All right, we've had a sacrifice. First one in a while. So we'll let that run its course. It'll take about six days. And then we'll uh, we'll do some more ceremonies. Meantime, we're just going to bust out research. Start growing extra food, which is good. It's gonna help our bear army too. Uh, when that grizzly grows up a little bit, we will name it, but not yet. Mule's gone berserk. That saddens me because Mule is alone aside from his horse. So I know when Mule goes berserk out here, he's taking it out on the horse. Welcome back. Your steadfast loyalty what a jerk. is greatly appreciated. Maybe there's like a rabbit on the map. Where is that? Uh, Craster, they were the eight months. Eight months already. Thank you, Craster. Also very much appreciated. All right, Flozus. Oh, you got Berserk. Um, I would like to get Neuroquake. We don't have a Neuroquake yet. It would be a nice thing to have if we just really can't beat whatever's happening. Well, see, all it takes to be good at this game is to just let the game just give you everything you ask for. That's all you gotta do. You want Neuroquake? Just ask, and then you get it, and the game's easier. It's easy. Let's go on the Oh, the extra food's coming in at a good time. Good time. Kind of need to move the kitchen stuff over here. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Pre-recorded, as always. As always. We'll probably will move it in here, though, later. By trade. I kind of wish we'd get just a normal raid. I kind of want to get a feel of where we are. Like, not just how many raiders we'd get, but how well we could defend against them right now. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start replacing... the uh, the other doors. So let's work on, we seem to get hit over here quite a bit. I feel like I kite around over here a lot. Let's go ahead and replace these ones. That's something we sure are getting plenty of. Oh god. <laughs> I actually hit the 3x button. Full sapper, I'm sorry. Shouldn't have taken any damage. Sorry, full sapper. <laughs> ah, he's just a little cut up. What's playing with the roof columns? Those are roof traps. So some enemies will eventually attack those and drop the roof on them.
No, a meat shield. You are, yeah. You've been a... You've been a meat shield for every infestation, I think. Uh, two prisoners. Seven days. They have blood rot. Meh. Shoot them or what? Idea is to have the raiders squish themselves? Yeah. Yeah. God, that that was so crazy, yeah. And I just started over, I was like, screw it. <laughs> Going stoic. Why is the reward so small? It's just a one star one, yeah. I don't know what determines why it offers one star versus three stars sometimes or two or whatever. Just a crappy one star quest though. Solar flare. We got plenty of plasteel, right? Yeah, okay. Lunch has given birth. We're up to four bears now. Combat supplies. Let's see here. Sell them a little bit of the tea. Probably keep an eye out for uh, cataphracts. Tech print. Super expensive, though. Trade. Recommendation for keeping armor on pawns and managing durability. Do you approach it the same as automating apparel? Yes, I do. Yeah. So, it's... It can be one of those things, like, when you're in the early mid-game, you might want to just force them to wear it, even if it's tattered, because sometimes, you know... Uh, it's worth the tattered mood debuff, especially if they already have like low expectations or moderate expectations or whatever. But in general, I just set it on the same clothing um, setup. So for instance, if we go in here and look at uh, flak vest, I have it set to have one flak vest in storage that's normal or better, 52% durability or better. And then in their clothing, I have that set up as 51% or better, normal or better. So this just automates it so that we have one in storage. You can do more than that if you want. Uh, as soon as someone's uh, armor falls to 51%, they take it off. They put the one on that's in storage, and that cues up the crafter to make a new one. So I treat it the same way. But um, for some things, I will force wear. Like some of these helmets are actually not... So I have tethered apparel. Some of those helmets are actually not at above 51%. Uh, but I just have them right clicked on it instead and force wear because it's better than I'd rather take that mood hit, have them have their brain protected than them be out here in a friggin like veil or something, but a little bit happier, you know? Uh, watch 15 prisoners and hosting one Royal plus their nine friends for 45 days. Yeah. How many refugees do we get on that weird quest? So in that same fluid run, the jungle one that we were talking about earlier, we had a refugee quest late game, which I hardly ever see. And uh, it was a lot. It was like, it was like 40 refugees or something. Ah, <laughs> uh, screw it, he can make it down here. 46 refugees, base food big enough, yeah. yeah. They become food. Yeah, no problem. It was refugees, yeah. Yeah. It's like a lot of people. I didn't realize how many it was gonna be yet. your mule character 
For me, it's just literally someone I don't care about. If you're like, if you're wanting to kind of min-max that role also, then all you really care about is someone that can win a one-on-one -on -one fight. And then the higher social, the better. Those are the, the only two things. Um, but yeah, for me, it's just, I don't care about them. And if they lose wealth, then great. Wealth management, success, you know? So if they die, whatever, I'll replace them. If they lose the stuff I'm out to trade, that sucks. But at least, you know, it doesn't affect the main colony, really. But if you are wanting to try to get the best sort of mule character for a perma trade, they need to be able to win a one-on-one -on -one fight. And the reason why, so for anyone that doesn't know, regardless of your difficulty, even on 500%, if you do a caravan that is a single colonist, has to be a single colonist, and uh, I think it's no more than one combat animal and less than 10,000 wealth, less than 10,000 wealth, then they will um, only ever get attacked by one enemy, one melee enemy. So as long as that person can win a melee fight or they have like a shock lance equipped, so they'll always win. Yeah, that's another important one too. If you don't want to give them food while they're out, if you want them to be self-sufficient, then you want to look at um, someone with decent plant skill. If they have a tribal background, if, if your faction actually is a tribal faction, so your, um, your icon is the TP, basically, they actually get a bonus to foraging while caravanning. That was me. <laughs> don't check your connections. I think, I don't know, a cat must have touched something. Hopefully it wasn't my microphone. Anyway. <laughs> um. All right, we're good. We're good. If they have, if you have the TP, meaning you're, uh, you're at a tribal scenario of some sort, tribal start, they get a bonus for caravan um, foraging. Check your connections. I did not. So I think it's around seven. I don't, I don't know what's been touched down there, but Windows is definitely unhappy about it. Don't touch Windows down there. Anyway, I think it's about a seven or eight plant skill and they can feed themselves forever. It's another good one minute one. Yeah, and some of the cheese stuff. I think that would be really good. Um, we found out that someone with a tribal faction with a level 10, um, level 10 in plants, if you park them on a forest tile, over time, they will build up hundreds, if not thousands of berries. You can use them as a, an emergency food storage system, which I think we did during the cheese run. So I could park like one of our colonists out here that has tin or higher planting at the edge of the map, just have them sit there forever. They'll feed themselves forever on berries and they'll just keep filling their inventory every day, higher and higher and higher. And then if your main colony runs out of food for some reason, let's say you have a fight and your kitchen burns, you literally just bring in that person off the map, dump like 1500 berries and then send them back out. It's, it's really handy. <laughs> it's really crazy too, yeah. Windows mad. How long on the sacrifice? You were friends with him? I doubt it. I doubt it. Three days. You never even saw them. They showed up. They came inside. I said, nope. I sent them outside. We shot them. Oh no, my friend. Maybe they knew each other before they got to the colony. Are we out of components? Pretty much, okay. invited him always buy components yeah i was saving that silver that we left with to buy sh low shields but we definitely need components yeah the commands page is not up to date um i was talking about it the other day i had a really screwed up thing with the web host that i've been using for almost 10 years really big problems with them 
And I literally just moved and I had to basically rebuild the site from a very old version. And I just haven't finished it yet, but I went ahead and put it live. So the commands page is not up to date. Um, I'll update it at some point, but the rest of the website should be pretty much up to date. How do you deal with your animals falling asleep in your kill spot? Um, so do you have, first off, I wouldn't have any animal sleeping spots at all because that can screw things up. So you're having them fall asleep, which, which like zonable animals? And you're having them fall asleep, what, in the little corner punch area that you have set up? I'm trying to, like, visualize what you got going on. I'm sure they'll be fine with you not having great skills. They're always, it's always a job for someone. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> they fall asleep in the corner, just zone them not to be allowed to go in that corner. Um, but it shouldn't be a problem anyway. Like, it, it should be alright for them to be there. Oh, you mean you're trying to use the animals themselves to do the attacking for you and they fall asleep? Yeah. Um, I tried and tried to figure out a way to make sure that would 100% not happen. And uh, we couldn't figure out a way. So you can't really prevent it. The closest thing you can do is have one of your people that are in there with them, if you have someone with them or nearby, shoot the wall and it'll wake them up. That's about all you can do. Um... You can also try, if they are bonded to someone, you can have them um, set to follow master when they're drafted, and then you can have that person there too, and then draft them, so. No. Killbox, no, no. The entire map's killbox. It's gone fair, and welcome in. Windrunner, welcome in. The map is a square, the entire map's a killbox. Alright, uh, any shield? No. So, we'll just get components while we're here instead then. Uh, what do we have left to sell? That's the closest I could, I could figure out on doing something. Fate of Rimworld. Oh yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for being here. Thank you for asking questions. Honestly, I wouldn't know half the stuff I know about RimWorld if it wasn't for other people asking questions because uh, a lot of times I wouldn't know the answer and then someone in chat would know the answer and they would answer and then, you know, I would learn too and then i just carry that on to the next person. Uh, yeah, we've had, um, we've had center drop one or two times in this run. Corner and someone yells, wake up, and fires a shotgun, yeah. Thanks, Windrunner. Oh yeah, it, it's so much easier to stream these days than it was when I had like no viewers. I would just try to narrate what I was doing, but it's so much easier to have people to ask things and bounce things off of and whatnot. Really fortunate. Going to do one for sappers? Yeah, yeah, I'll do one for sappers. I talk about sappers a lot in my playthroughs. Um, a lot of people end up asking, so I'll do one. It, it, it's another one that can be pretty short. I don't need to explain how the mechanics work for that one. I can just... Sooth holsters are really important too in this run. Maybe I should grab one of those. Yeah, I'm gonna grab one of those. We used our other one, so... All right, mule, let's bring that stuff back. God, I wish we'd get a normal raid, man. Just mech clusters and animals. really like to have an idea of where we are defensively. Hmm. So path and deal with you? Yes. Yep. Yep. That one is really nice so you can kind of understand how they're choosing their pathing. So really quickly, for anyone that doesn't know, pather, or excuse me, the pathing of sappers, the pathers, um, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get to the closest colonist assigned bed to them from where they spawn, basically. And they try to take the lowest movement penalty 
two there, not caring about walls on the way. Uh, walls are like a one point of movement, anyway, impairing. Um, but they also try to avoid turret line of sight. So the way I always do it is I put turret line of sight everywhere in the base, aside from where I want them to break through. And then I put cover and fallback position at that spot. So basically make a sapper specific kill box. And the sappers just always come through where I want them. We just line up, kill them, and they end up just being an easier normal raid. It's really nice. Science response outside the base. The path go through base. Yes. Yep. I had to do that in the cheese run. That's in the cheese run. That's how I or why I blocked the edge of the map. I think that's uh, that page. I think I've is back online. I think expedition cheese. I think that link is working again. Vegan cheese run. Trial expanded mode. Now you get to have fun longer. Another manhunter. What is going on, man? Send me normal raids, Randy, please. Sixteen elephants. It was so tempting to have them fight, but. Wait, the mechs? No, the mechs are there to help with a raid, so. It's tempting, though. It's almost like every time Mule is about to get back, Randy sends manhunters to try to catch him. <laughs> so after the elephants are done with their uh, campaign against us, we'll uh, do another festival. Sucks here. Better the, to know than not, though, I guess. Raid me, Randy. You can do it. Get another one there for uh drop pod oh and i need to make one of these drop pod lure ones let's do it out here somewhere It's already set, okay. Power current turrets in the current patch. Uh they're there's they're better than they were. They got the their first buff like ever. Turrets have been nerfed ever since like early beta. They just keep getting nerfed and nerfed. So when they got buffed a little bit in the previous uh, or a pretty recent patch, it was pretty crazy that, that even happened, but I still mainly just use them to pull aggro. Can't really rely on them at this difficulty as your like main defense. Although, with the depending on your part, what stage of the game you're in, uh, the wealth of a turret is super low. It can be as low as like having. What do we find out? Like early game, um, the difference between getting like another colonist is like 60 turrets worth of raid points. It's actually crazy. So, I mean, they're they're worth it as long as you have the resources, power, or whatever, but I still... I still mainly use them just as, uh... Like, aggro sponges. It's gone, Rubble. Can you win a game without electricity? That'd be interesting or boring. I think we could win without electricity, yeah. I'm not sure if it would be interesting or boring, though. Win a game without electricity, 
So, if we did it, 100% no electricity. Meaning we can't even do the ship because the ship generates its own electricity. We'd have to do the royal ending. I think it's doable. Do Lord of the Rings game on Epic coming soon. Oh, it was that announced today. I'm, yeah, I need to look at today's after the stream. Yeah, I think we could do a no electricity one. Give me that bugs. <laughs> I'm trying to think like... We... Uh, yeah, just using the trade strategy with like a mule. We could get all the guns and armor and everything like that we needed. Clothing that we need without any electricity. 100%. I already don't use... I already don't use uh, freezers, really. We have to use fueled stoves. We couldn't do any advanced research, right? So we'd have to use um, royalty victory. Is there anything that we would need that would be electricity? Fifty total walls in one door. <laughs> Oh yeah, my tiny map. I wonder how many walls are in the tiny map that I did. More than 50 though. Is that a tunnel? Or uh, like a maze at the entrance? Yeah, but the ship generates electricity. So that's why I was saying it depends on how strict you would be. The, sh the ship engine itself actually is a basically a geothermal generator. Well, as far as like power, gives off a lot of power. So it depends on how strict you would want to be with it. EMP count? I don't know. Slow upon run, one peg, one wooden arm. All zero. Very passionate about it all. I, I think so, yeah. Could have helped in previous games. So I'll explain how it works. I think I've already explained it once during this run, but I know not everyone was here for it. So basically, uh, drop pods work differently. Center drop drop pods work differently depending on if you're talking about mechs or you're talking about um, pirates. So pirates, how they work is they have a 60% chance to center drop on top of a of a pawn. 60% chance center drop on top of a pawn, whether they're roofed or not, as long as they're not under a red mountain. They have a 40% chance to drop on an un roofed trade beacon so you can hedge your bets a little bit and reduce your chance for a center drop on head with pirates specifically by putting an unroofed beacon where you want them to drop 40 percent of the time that, that'd be another short a good short guide yeah very good one actually i get asked about that a lot too now mech drops work differently they change these they used to work the same way Mech drop pods can no longer drop through uh, a roof. Uh, they can no longer center drop through the roof. Now, if the center drop is outside the roof and the ones that drop nearby, they can still crash through. But they try to drop on top of a pond's head. And if they are an unroofed pond's head, and if there are none, they'll just drop nearby instead. They don't care about beacons. But pirates do. Look, like you would die. <laughs> Here's the thing about a single pawn run. I don't think it would be very fun to watch. It'd probably be kind of boring. But I actually think it's easier than most of the runs that I do. And I think the reason why is it's hard to... It's really hard to state exactly just how much the difference in raid points and the difference on size of raids you get from one to two pawns. It's actually really crazy. If you have a map that is just one pawn and just the ship, that can be about 35 to 40,000 wealth. That's it, 35 to 40,000 wealth. With a single pawn, that's not a lot of raid points. You could 
probably defend all of the ship launch raids as long as you destroy the wealth between raids with a trap tunnel. It's not, it's not. Yeah, they're tedious, but not really very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I tell people. People ask me to do like single pawn runs. I'm like, I just don't think it would be very interesting to play or to watch, but I might do one sometime just to like check it off and be like, all right, here it is. You can go watch it. But the raids are really not very big on a single pawn. If you only have the wealth of just them and the ship, it's, it's not a lot. Uh, let's see. Do they have anything that we actually want? Uh, we'll buy all their components. I was really shocked, actually. I tried it out on, um, I think it was during the melee run. I tried it on dev mode just to see. And I was actually shocked how small raids could be if that's all you have. All those bears. Bad news bears. All right, elephants are gone. We're going to do another one of these. I would really, really like to get another. I would I would love to get to 20 colonists that can shoot. Then I can split 10 and 10 off with uh, kiting, and it would work much better because I can just have one group like here, one group here. Instead of having them run back and forth, I just have different groups pop out to pull in different spots. Addiction, planet killer inbound, fight to survive. I think the next run I'm gonna do after this is another modded storyteller. It's been a while. That was a lot of fun. Uh, off to work. Thank you for hanging out. Have a good shift. All right, be good, be good, Kate. Body purist. Body pure is volatile, pretty. How are you, our acquaintance? I've never seen you. I just found out you even existed. Actually, we don't even know you exist. No one's even seen you. You're less than an acquaintance. Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. Is it... Is it its, like, own thing? Or is it in the, um... It's probably not in the Warner Brothers franchise, right? Does that... I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you... I'll let you say. Trisha! Where have you been? Uh, hey, Trisha. Welcome in. The Grand Will Run again. Costco. We haven't insta killed one in a while. It's kind of weird. We... Costco. Uh, Sigden came in and was like, "What? I was here before Trisha? No way." runs assassin background and spelling makes you think of fallout 4 sacrificate intimate assassin let's go and that's it welcome in Mule is back. Oh, 
Oh my god, that's like all we're getting. Dug too deep, dug too deep, dug too deep, dug too deep. You want to raid? I dug too deep. We should really replace that leg of yours, Soul Sapper. Oh man, I didn't even know about this. You have 50% manipulation? Might want to look for some uh, bionics. one big kill box <laughs> all right um need to butcher her someone else already on the way with it oh there we go no wall challenge. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. Once per 20 days on average. Not sure if that's for each deep drill. I have two. I do have two. Yeah. Let's take a look. So 20 days on average, huh? They don't appear on here, right? Because they're their own events. Unfortunate. Independent developer, free range games, North Beach games. Pretty hoping for another uh, shadow of game, you know. Those are uh, those are amazing, yeah. I just make everything doors, yeah. Not allowed to use walls here. Look at all these doors. Oh, that's cheating. Slave ship, all right. It's weird that we've gotten more slave ships in the mid to late game than we did in the early game. Notice the system was so good. You know what's annoying about that is they have like um, whatever copyright, whatever it's called, uh, on the Nemesis system. Other games cannot use that system. So if if you played those, you're like, man, why don't more games do these? They literally can't trademark Nemesis system. Uh, however, the new what is it, Wonder Woman game that WB is putting out is going to have that same Nemesis system in it. Mechanic shouldn't be able to, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Nimble underground, or someone's beating someone up out there. Construction and plants, though. Nimble's good. 66 is not. 25 year old construction trigger happy cannibal. I put them on construction, then I put my character on cooking again. So maybe them. Sure, happy, so good. Medieval slave. Uh, so we might take them if we can afford them. Could trade one of our new baby bears. Sure, happy so good. I think I'm gonna do it. They're not good at shooting yet, but they can get there. They can get there. Uh, let's actually try a conversion on them before I arrest them and see if we get lucky with that.
from YouTube because you can learn a lot of things. Feel like never play like this. Well, yeah, not, that's the thing I try to tell people is like play with whatever's fun for you, right? Like for the chill experience. I I find my way of playing chill for me, but and I try to say that in all my playthroughs and like the guides and stuff is like play whatever's fun for you. You don't have to min max. There's so many different settings or different mods. Just play whatever's fun for you. A lot of people get uh, lose track of that, even like RimWorld, you know? It's a game, whatever you like doing. I like playing this way, but... It looks pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out after the stream. Yeah, thank you for watching, done. That name, welcome in. Terrible conversion. It's a really awesome system, yeah. My playthroughs of those games are up on YouTube. It was, uh, I really, really enjoyed playing those. Alright, arrest it is. One, one second. Uh, I can go deal with something. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wrap up the stream. I haven't even been streaming very long. I had another, like, three or four hours to go. Oh, man. Can't catch a break this year. Jesus Christ. Um, alright. Let me set this up so don't forget for next time. Thank you, Adam Vin. Recently up the difficulty to try to survive, turn commitment mode on for once. That's awesome. Yeah. And like I said, as long as you're having fun, as long as you're having fun. All right, well, um, let me stop the recording.